All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, Joe Biden seems to be cracking a bit under the pressures of the campaign trail. Yesterday morning, he woke up to a new Bernie ad about his record on Social Security. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it the third time, and I tried it the fourth time. Well, we've got some bad news for them. We are not going to cut Social Security. We're going to expand. Then he had to watch as CNN revealed new polling numbers showing him falling behind as Bernie surges into the lead overall, and notably with voters of color. 27% of voters now support Bernie Sanders. Joe Biden is at 24%, followed by Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg. Sanders is up 11 points since CNN's poll in October. Biden is down 10 points. Joining us now is CNN political commentator Karen Finney. She's the former senior spokeswoman for Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. And Crystal Ball, she supported Bernie Sanders in 2016, but has not yet endorsed him for 2020. Great to have both of you. Crystal, because you supported him in 2016, are you surprised by this movement that Bernie Sanders is showing in this latest poll? And what do you think it is that's resonating so much? Yeah, I'm not particularly surprised. The stress of watching his frontrunner status erode and facing real questions for the first time about his corruption, record on Social Security and Iraq war vote, may just be taking a toll. Why wasn't his apology enough, Mr. Vice President? Why, why attack Sanders? Why, 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 you're getting nervous, man. Calm down. It's okay. He apologized for saying that I was corrupt. He didn't say anything about whether or not I was telling the truth about Social Security. Um, wow. Look, presidential campaigns are long and they're hard, but let's be honest here. Biden has mostly been hanging out with rich people and doing an occasional event just to show his face. It is way too early for this type of unhinged testiness, especially when you stack this up with Biden's infamous push-up contest meltdown when he lost control because a voter dared challenge him on Hunter, or this moment when he told an immigration protester that they should just go vote for Trump. Is that over those years, there were three million people that were deported and separated from their families. Yeah. We had this classification of families. We should children, vote for Trump. Families we should vote for Trump. And there have been many more moments just like these. These mini campaign meltdowns aren't just fascinating to watch. They beg a very real, very serious question. Is Joe Biden actually ready to weather the storm of a general election? Is he really prepared to go through the brutal ugliness of what Trump will surely unleash? I don't ask this question to be cute or to be snarky. I really mean it very sincerely. Just remember, Biden has largely been cosseted from almost every attack on him. Trump's decision to seek a Ukrainian investigation on Biden and Hunter and Burisma has essentially made any of the legitimate questions about Joe's industry shilling and family cashing in radioactive for Democrats. Just witness how much pressure was on Bernie to apologize for what was a very fair Biden corruption critique that didn't even come directly from the campaign. Biden also went totally nuclear over a clip circulated by the Sanders campaign of him talking about Social Security that he didn't think provided a full context. Come on, buddy. This is a campaign. Do you think anyone is ever going to give you the full 15 minutes to explain the whole history and background and why your support for cutting Social Security was appropriate and justified at that time? If you think a mild critique of Biden's record on Social Security is the worst that this campaign has on offer, you have got another thing coming. Biden will long for the days of Bernie's mild-mannered attacks. Do you think Trump is even going to stick to policy? Do you think anything at all would be kept sacred? Just today, as an example, the Washington Examiner is out with new details about the luxury lifestyle Hunter is leading while defying a court order in a child support fight with the woman he met at a strip club just down the street from here. He has refused to turn over his financial records to the court, is in danger of being held in contempt, and although he and his new wife are living in a $12,000 per month mansion, he has not paid anything to support his new child. Drugs, strippers, cash, mansions, infidelity, paternity suits. If there is one thing Trump knows how to do, it is to exploit tabloid fodder and sensationalize it for his own benefit. Remember what he did after the Access Hollywood tape came out? At the very next debate, he brought along some of Bill Clinton's accusers and sat them right in the audience where Hillary had to look at them the whole time. Is Joe really ready 
to have Hunter's baby mama paraded on national TV or the dancers from his favorite strip clubs or God knows what else he would even come up with. It's not like he's constrained by the truth either. Nothing will be sacred. Not Hunter, not Bo, not Jill, and not you. Now look, Hillary Clinton had plenty of shortcomings, believe you me. But one thing I will say about her is no one doubted she had the stony toughness to handle whatever personal or family attacks came her way. If the 90s didn't reduce her to rubble, nothing is going to. In contrast, think about the man that you saw in that video lashing out because of a legitimate question about his attack on Bernie. Can you really say the same? Now, Electability is honestly a pretty dumb concept and one that has caused Democrats to crash into the rocks many, many times. After all, no one would have ever said a brand new senator with the middle name Hussein was electable. On the other hand, plenty of Democrats did cheer for Trump to win the nomination, thinking foolishly he'd be easy to beat. So it's good to have some humility with your electability takes. But judging by the fragile brittleness of Biden so far in the softest, warmest, fuzziest competitive primary in recent history, we should all be deeply concerned that he can stand up under the pressure that Trump will surely bring. With the polls sliding and the scrutiny from Bernie, this has been a pretty rough week for, Bre for Biden, honestly. But if he's the nominee, he will pray for the good times like these to return. Sagar, looking at that moment, which is just like he- It's pretty unhinged. It's pretty unhinged. And I just thought, gosh, you can't even take the lightest scrutiny. This has been softballs. This whole primary has been like a love fest. And I get why, because Democrats are so afraid of going after each other out of fear of helping Trump, which I think is obviously ridiculous. But this has been the softest focus primary that we have had in recent history. It and just he can't really shows that. his entitlement, right? He's totally entitled whenever it comes to this. He's not, he doesn't want to answer his question. He doesn't want to answer any question. No. And he treats, I mean, first of all, like, where's all the concern for the press, right? He put his hand on him. He's like, why, why? Why, why, shouted and wagged a finger touchy. in space. Yeah, it's very strange. <laughs> yeah. It's very odd behavior. And and really, it just shows you that he doesn't want to face any questions about corruption, doesn't want to, any insinuation that he's doing something wrong, he absolutely will not take it. Behind the scenes, people have reported how Biden is a guy who will berate his staff. He'll scream at them yeah. if, if, if he thinks that something has gone wrong. You saw a little bit of a taste of that, what his actual temperament is like. I mean, he's 78 years old, right? And here's the thing, whenever you're that old, it's not like just being that old is crazy, but like some people who are that old do start to lose it. And like, that's kind of what I think you're seeing emotionally or temperamentally with Biden because he had a lot of the charm and stuff like that. You'll see it every once in a while. But I, I mean, I was around whenever he was doing interviews and press interviews, not even four or five years ago. It couldn't even be more different. It the, really I could. think that's true. Yeah. I was thinking about that a lot yesterday because we never, before this campaign, we really never saw that side of him in never. public. Yeah. We heard about it from behind the scenes but we never saw it in public. And that ability to kind of like maintain your emotional control, it's a muscle. Mm -hmm. It gets fatigued over time. And as you age, it gets fatigued yeah. more quickly. And so you see these flashes of temper more and more often from him that just make him look out of control. I just can't even imagine how he will react and the meltdowns we will see with whatever Trump is going to throw. I mean, no Democrat will even bring up the words Hunter. And I get it. And I do think that, you know, where Trump will go with it will be way over mm. the line. But you have to acknowledge reality that that's what is coming for him. And, you know, that's what the thing with Bernie. Bernie was asked yesterday whether he wants to see Hunter Biden before the trip. And he said, no, he doesn't want to see it. His campaign, I mean, they are just not capable of touching this, even though it is a totally legitimate thing to attack. And there's, I mean, I remember the corruption 2016. corruption piece is did, legitimate to how attack. How many times yes. did he ask, how many times did he ask Hillary Clinton to release her paid speeches to Wall Street? That was a totally legitimate attack. I mean, yeah. I think this is on the exact same par, but because Trump is around, that it has completely changed the calculus for a lot of these people. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh -huh. All right, Sagar, looking forward to your radar. That's next.